Jesus Christ, also known as Jesus of Nazareth, is one of the most influential and significant figures in human history. His life, teachings, crucifixion and resurrection have shaped the course of Western civilization and the faith of billions. This comprehensive account of his life will cover his birth, early years, ministry, crucifixion and resurrection drawing from the Gospels of the New Testament and historical context. Birth and early years. Birth in Bethlehem. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, a small town in Judea around 46 BCE. According to the Gospels of Matthew and Luke, his mother, Mary, was a young virgin betrothed to Joseph, a carpenter. The angel Gabriel announced to Mary that she would conceive a son by the Holy Spirit and that he would be called Jesus, meaning God saves. This miraculous conception fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that a virgin would bear a son called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. The Gospel of Luke provides a detailed account of Jesus' birth. Due to a Roman census, Joseph and Mary traveled to Bethlehem, where Jesus was born in a humble stable because there was no room in the inn. Shepherds guided by angels visited the newborn Jesus, recognizing him as the Messiah. The Gospel of Matthew adds the visit of the Magi, wise men from the east, who followed a star to Bethlehem and brought gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh, signifying Jesus' kingship, divinity and future suffering. The flight to Egypt and return to Nazareth. King Herod, threatened by the prophecy of a new king, ordered the massacre of all male infants in Bethlehem. Warned by an angel, Joseph fled to Egypt with Mary and Jesus, escaping Herod's wrath. After Herod's death, the Holy Family returned to Israel, settling in the town of Nazareth in Galilee. This fulfilled another prophecy that the Messiah would be called a Nazarene. Jesus' childhood and early adulthood. Very little is known about Jesus' childhood. The Gospels provide only one account of his early years. At the age of 12, Jesus accompanied his parents to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Mary and Joseph began their journey home, they realized Jesus was missing. After three days of searching, they found him in the temple, engaging in deep discussions with the teachers of the law, astounding them with his understanding and wisdom. When questioned by his parents, Jesus replied, Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? This incident foreshadowed his unique relationship with God and his future ministry, the beginning of Jesus' ministry. Baptism by John the Baptist Jesus' public ministry began around the age of 30. John the Baptist, a prophetic figure calling for repentance and baptizing people in the Jordan River, prepared the way for Jesus. Jesus approached John for baptism despite being sinless. John hesitated, saying that he needed to be baptized by Jesus. However, Jesus insisted, and upon being baptized, the heavens opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in the form of a dove. A voice from heaven declared, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This event marked the beginning of Jesus' ministry and affirmed his divine sonship. Temptation in the Wilderness Immediately after his baptism, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, where he fasted for forty days and nights. During this time, Satan tempted him three times. First, he challenged Jesus to turn stones into bread to satisfy his hunger. Jesus replied, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Second, Satan took him to the pinnacle of the temple and urged him to throw himself down, quoting scripture that angels would protect him. Jesus responded, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Finally, Satan showed him all the kingdoms of the world and offered them in exchange for worship. Jesus firmly rejected him, saying, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Jesus' resistance to temptation demonstrated his obedience to God and his authority over evil. Calling the first disciples Following his time in the wilderness, Jesus began preaching the message of repentance and the coming of the kingdom of God. Jesus chose 12 disciples in total, representing the 12 tribes of Israel, signifying the restoration of God's people, the ministry of Jesus, teaching and miracles. Jesus traveled throughout Galilee, Judea, and surrounding regions, teaching in synagogues, on hillsides, and by the Sea of Galilee. His teachings emphasized love, compassion, and forgiveness, challenging the legalistic and hypocritical practices of the religious leaders. He often used parables, simple stories with profound spiritual truths to convey his message. 
One of Jesus' most famous teachings is the Sermon on the Mount, found in Matthew 5-7. In this sermon he presented the Beatitudes, blessings for the poor in spirit, the meek, the merciful, and others. He also taught about loving one's enemies, the proper way to pray, and the importance of seeking God's kingdom above all else. The Lord's Prayer, a model for Christian prayer, was introduced in this sermon. Jesus performed numerous miracles, demonstrating his divine authority and compassion. He healed the sick, gave sight to the blind, made the lame walk, cleansed lepers, and cast out demons. Notable miracles include feeding 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish, calming a storm on the Sea of Galilee, and raising the dead such as Jairus' daughter and Lazarus. Confrontations with Religious Leaders Jesus' teachings and actions often brought him into conflict with the religious leaders of his time, particularly the Pharisees and Sadducees. They accused him of blasphemy for forgiving sins, criticized him for healing on the Sabbath, and were scandalized by his association with tax collectors and sinners. Jesus rebuked their hypocrisy, emphasizing that true righteousness comes from a transformed heart rather than strict adherence to the letter of the law. One of the most significant confrontations occurred when Jesus cleansed the temple in Jerusalem. He drove out the money changers and merchants, accusing them of turning God's house into a den of thieves. This act symbolized his authority over the religious establishment and foreshadowed his ultimate sacrifice to purify and restore true worship. The Transfiguration A pivotal moment in Jesus' ministry was the Transfiguration, witnessed by Peter, James and John. Jesus took them up a high mountain where his appearance was transformed and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Moses and Elijah appeared speaking with Jesus about his impending death. A voice from a cloud declared, This is my beloved Son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. The transfiguration affirmed Jesus' divine nature and his fulfillment of the law and the prophets. The Passion Week Triumphal Entry into Jerusalem As Jesus approached Jerusalem for the Passover, he rode into the city on a donkey, fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah. Crowds welcomed him with palm branches and shouts of, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. This event, known as the Triumphal Entry, signaled the arrival of the Messiah and heightened expectations for his establishment of God's kingdom. Last Supper During the Passover meal, known as the Last Supper, Jesus shared significant teachings and instituted the Eucharist or Holy Communion. He took bread, blessed it, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup of wine, gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. This act symbolized his impending sacrifice and established a new covenant between God and humanity. Betrayal and Arrest After the Last Supper, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. He expressed deep anguish and asked God if the cup of suffering could be taken from him, yet he submitted to God's will. Judas Iscariot, one of his twelve disciples, betrayed him by leading a group of soldiers to arrest him. Jesus was taken to the high priest's house, where he faced a series of trials. The Crucifixion, Trials and Condemnation Jesus was brought before the Sanhedrin, the Jewish council, and falsely accused of blasphemy for claiming to be the Son of God. They condemned him to death but lacked the authority to execute him, so they handed him over to the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate. Pilate, finding no basis for a death sentence, attempted to release Jesus, offering the crowd a choice between Jesus and Barabbas, a notorious criminal. Influenced by the chief priests, the crowd chose Barabbas, and Pilate reluctantly sentenced Jesus to be crucified. The way to the cross, Jesus was mocked, beaten, and forced to carry his cross to Golgotha, the place of execution. Along the way, Simon of Cyrene was compelled to help him. At Golgotha, Jesus was nailed to the cross, and a sign reading, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, was placed above his head. He was crucified between two thieves, fulfilling the prophecy of being numbered with transgressors. The Crucifixion During his crucifixion, Jesus uttered several significant statements. He prayed for his executioners, saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He promised the repentant thief, Today you will be with me in paradise. He entrusted his mother Mary to the care of his disciple John, saying, Woman, behold your son, behold your mother. 
He cried out in anguish, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And later declared, It is finished, signifying the completion of his redemptive work. Finally, he commended his spirit into God's hands, saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last, death and burial. At the moment of Jesus' death, the veil of the temple was torn in two, symbolizing the removal of the barrier between God and humanity. The earth shook, rocks split and tombs opened, and many saints were raised to life. A Roman centurion overseeing the crucifixion exclaimed, Truly this was the Son of God. Joseph of Arimathea, a secret disciple of Jesus, requested Pilate's permission to bury Jesus' body. Accompanied by Nicodemus, he took Jesus' body down from the cross, wrapped it in a linen shroud and placed it in a new tomb hewn out of rock. They rolled a large stone against the entrance, and Roman guards were posted to secure the tomb as the chief priests feared that Jesus' disciples might steal his body and claim he had risen. The Resurrection and Ascension The Resurrection On the third day after Jesus' crucifixion, early in the morning, Mary Magdalene and other women went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body with spices. They found the stone rolled away and the tomb empty. An angel appeared and announced, He is not here, for he has risen as he said, Come see the place where he lay. The women, filled with fear and joy, ran to tell the disciples. Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene, then to other women and later to two disciples on the road to Emmaus. That evening, he appeared to the disciples gathered in a locked room, showing them his hands and side to prove he was alive. Over the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to many of his followers, teaching them about the kingdom of God and preparing them for their mission. The Great Commission and Ascension Before his ascension, Jesus gathered his disciples and gave them the Great Commission. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. He then led them to the Mount of Olives, blessed them, and was taken up into heaven, promising to send the Holy Spirit to empower them. The impact of Jesus' life, the birth of the church. After Jesus' ascension, his disciples returned to Jerusalem where they waited for the promised Holy Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, the Spirit descended upon them with a sound like a rushing wind and tongues of fire, enabling them to speak in various languages. Peter preached to the gathered crowd, proclaiming Jesus' resurrection and calling for repentance and baptism. About 3,000 people were baptized that day, marking the birth of the Christian Church. The spread of Christianity. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, the apostles began spreading the message of Jesus throughout the Roman Empire and beyond. They performed miracles, established churches, and faced persecution for their faith. Paul, a former persecutor of Christians, became one of the most influential apostles, writing many letters that form a significant part of the New Testament. Christianity spread rapidly, transforming lives and cultures, and eventually became the dominant religion of the Roman Empire. Jesus' teachings and influence Jesus' teachings continue to inspire and challenge people around the world. His emphasis on love, compassion, and forgiveness has shaped ethical and moral principles in Western civilization. The Beatitudes, the Lord's Prayer, and the command to love one's neighbor as oneself remain central to Christian faith and practice. The life and teachings of Jesus have also influenced art, literature, music, and philosophy. His story has been depicted in countless paintings, sculptures, and films, and his parables and sayings have been quoted and studied for centuries. Theological significance. Theologically, Jesus is understood as the incarnate Son of God, fully divine and fully human. His life, death and resurrection are seen as the fulfillment of God's plan for the salvation of humanity. Through his sacrificial death, Jesus atoned for the sins of the world, offering forgiveness and reconciliation with God. His resurrection is celebrated as the victory over sin and death, providing the hope of eternal life for believers. Conclusion Jesus Christ's life on earth, though brief, left an indelible mark on history and continues to impact the lives of millions. His teachings, miracles, death and resurrection form the foundation of the Christian faith. As the central figure of Christianity, Jesus' message of love, redemption and hope transcends time and culture, offering a path to spiritual renewal and eternal life.